executive director at the Python Software Foundation. Um, for those of you that don't know what the Python Software Foundation is, I guarantee you, you will know at the end of this talk. <laughs> um, so my story. As a child who immigrated to the US, I always had a hard time fitting in. When we first came here, I didn't speak the language. My family didn't speak the language. We weren't familiar with the customs, and we had a difficult time recreating the life that we had abroad. Some of that followed, uh oh. Some of that followed me. Can everyone hear me okay? Some of that followed me. We good? To my adulthood, especially when it came time to picking what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. Nothing I ever did felt like it fit, and I struggled with this for many years. When I graduated high school, I didn't go to a university like everyone else because I had no idea what I wanted to do. I didn't see a clear path for myself, nor did I feel a great passion for anything specific like my fellow graduates did. I attended a local community college for several years and worked part-time. I took classes that were interesting to me. I took several semesters of early child education classes thinking that maybe I wanted to be a teacher. I, learned, I loved learning about history, so maybe I'd be a historian, but then I thought, what kind of jobs would be available to me? I even dabbled in philosophy a little bit, but turned out I did not like that at all. <laughs> Um, when I was about 20 years old, someone I knew recommended a job to me. And they told me that this job involved a lot of traveling. So that sparked a lot of interest for me because at that time I was young, single, and still living with my parents. <laughs> um, I applied and luckily I was hired for the job. And at that same time, I stopped thinking about what my greater calling in life was. The company that I went to work for, um, they, they're still around and they currently provide a wide variety of services to conferences all over the US. Um, those services include meeting planning, project management, even registration and housing apps. Um, so here is where I learned how to organize conferences. Here is also where I learned how to program using in, Informix 4GL and PHP. <laughs> Um, I ended up working for this company for seven years. But something amazing happened through this job. I worked my first PyCon in 2008. I started by helping volunteers organize the conference, and eventually I helped develop the first PyCon registration and housing app that would be managed by a professional service. What an eye-opening experience PyCon was for me. I experienced what our community had to offer. From the start, I felt inclusion, a welcoming nature, the desire to raise each other up, the ability to work together to overcome obstacles. Looking back, I guess prior to going to PyCon, I never experienced or felt these attributes or characteristics in any of the other communities I, I met. So PyCon 2008 turned out to be a turning point for me in my life. In the fall of that year, I signed up for night school and was determined to get my CS degree because I found a place I fit. I found the Python community. With the help of our community, I started to see my path forward. I knew right after PyCon 2008 that being part of this community is what I wanted to do. So funny enough, my night courses only covered Java and C++. <laughs> and even more ironically, I didn't expect to one day be the executive director of the PSF, which, let me tell you, involves zero coding. <laughs> All that aside, I am sure that my computer science degree helped shape who I am today. But I am more convinced that our community helped shape who I am today. Everyone sitting here has been somehow impacted by Python and its community, or will be for the first time at this conference. We'll forever carry around our stories because that's how Python changed our lives. All of your stories, my story, the stories from all around the world are what make Python special. More so, no two stories are the same. They are what makes our community. So the Python Software Foundation tries to embody all of that and be the support for all of us so we can have our own stories to tell. 
The PSF's mission is to foster Python in its community. Its mission is to create a community that empowers people no matter where they live, the language they speak, the color of their skin, their age, and so much more, so they can have their own impactful Python story. Our entire community and the PSF work together to sustain Python's ecosystem. An ecosystem where through diversity, inclusion, education, trademark protection, financial support, and so much more, we continue to grow a community and therefore fostering a support system for one another. And you might ask, why is it important that we focus on all this today? The answer to that question can honestly be a talk in itself, but the short answer is Python is an open source language and it's driven by its community. It's driven by collaboration, by transparency. We all need to know what drives Python. Python's code is an important component of our ecosystem. It is the commonality that we all have sitting in this room, but we are more important. Without us, it would cease to exist. The beginners, the users, the contributors, the core developers, even the core, the creator of the language himself, all the people behind Python, the interactions we have are what shape the code. Because of this, we are invested in Python, and that's why it's important. So how does the PSF support this vast community? What's the PSF story? So the PSF story began in 2001. It was started by a couple of Pythonistas. One of them is sitting right here in this very first row, Paul Everett. 18 years ago, the PSF board directors started to pave the way for our PSF today. From the start, they worked on getting a few sponsors, which when I was looking through some of the minutes, I think it was about $17,000 the first year. Um, they created a place for communications to happen within our community. They started to vote in members to the PSF. They decided how they were going to run the Python conference and what was the PSF's place in the community. And let me tell you, a lot has changed since then. It's evident that the PSF has grown tremendously over the years, just like our community has. That growth has empowered the PSF to do more for our community. During the early years, the PSF supported community work 100% by volunteer efforts. And over the years, as the work that we did increased, we learned that that was not 100% sustainable. Even though we do use volunteers to do a lot of the work, we now have a staff. When I started with the PSF, I was one of two employees. Now we're seven. The more employees that we have, the more initiatives that we can work on. The more financial support that the PSF gets, the more financial support we can provide to our community. The PSF now runs several impactful services. And I'd like us all to take a look at each of these by reflecting on what the PSF did last year in 2018. As I go through and explain what our, what our spending was for each of these services, I'll also try to update you for the current things that are happening with these services. So the following charts that I'm going to share with you are from the PSF's first annual impact report. Um, we created the first annual impact report earlier this year um, to achieve greater transparency with our community on how much money the PSF does receive and how we spend it. So the report online shows much more detail than what I'll show you today. So if you're interested in learning more about our finances and our growth, please feel free to check out this bit.ly link. Or if you want to follow along um, through some of the charts, please go ahead, check it out. Um, so we've received really awesome positive feedback about this report from our community. So we'll be sure to do this kind of thing every year. So in January of 2020, we, we definitely plan on having the impact report for 2019. So let's dive in and take a look at PyCon US. Looking at the program service chart, we see that the largest piece of the spending pie goes towards making PyCon happen. The PSF produces PyCon. It's a huge conference with a lot of moving parts. 
to give you some comparisons to, for, to show the growth over the years, the Python conference in 2002 had a budget of approximately $30,000. As we see here, PyCon 2008 cost more than $1.5 million. PyCon 2008 was less than 1,500 people. Now PyCon sells out every year at about 3,500 attendees. The process of PyCon is resource heavy. Most of our staff spends at least six months out of the year working on PyCon. In August of last year, in 2008, the PSF hired its first full-time employee that only works on PyCon. She works on PyCon all year round, which is amazing. And to give you an idea of how far in advance we work, our team is working on starting the planning for PyCon 22-23. And at the end of this year, they're gonna start working on 24-25, which just blows my mind. In addition to time, PyCon requires a lot of money to happen. Even though we try to be very thrifty in how we run PyCon, it is still a massive expense for the PSF. PyCon has grown to be the largest Python conference in the world, and it is also the largest source of revenue for the PSF. In 2008, PyCon's revenue was 83% of the PSF's total revenue. If PyCon doesn't have a good year, the PSF might not have enough funds to cover our grants program or to pay for its overhead. PyCon is also the longest PyCon. It totals nine days. We have two full days of tutorials, three conference days, and four sprint days. Even though many attendees cannot make it for the full duration, we do have hundreds of people that do. And to me, that just emphasizes the dedication of our community. Every year, we attempt to provide a remarkable experience for our community, similar to what Scott was describing as their process here for Pi Colorado was. We try to keep prices low, we provide daycare, we provide financial assistance for those that need it, we provide many networking opportunities for our attendees, and we also try to provide a wide variety of skill level content. Additionally, we make sure that all of the content is publicly available within a couple of hours, so those that cannot attend PyCon can still see all of our tutorials and all of our talks online within a day or two. So a few weeks ago, I'm super happy to, to announce that our team launched the PyCon 2020 site. For those of you interested in going to PyCon, I recommend you check it out. Registration isn't open yet, but it will be in a few months. And for those that are interested in proposing a talk, our CFP will open next week. So next we have our awards program. So this was started in 2008. The PSF loves to recognize community members that have a positive impact on Python's community. The process here is pretty simple. Through this email, ad uh, email address that you see here, psf at python.org, um, the PSF accepts nominations for, for community service awards. Quarterly, the PSF board directors review all of these nominations that we receive and they select two to four award winners per quarter. We also have something called the Distinguished Service Award, which is the highest level of recognition that someone can receive from the PSF. This award is decided by the board directors and is given to community members that have positively impacted Python for a sustained period of time. So these awards come with a cash prize because we feel that is a good way to show our appreciation to our volunteers who are all over the world. Um, we, give, we give out about 10 awards a year, and so this expense is small when you compare it to something like PyCon, for example. But we do feel that this type of recognition is important to our volunteers and is important to our community growth. Anyone can nominate a deserving member. So if you know of anyone that should be recognized for their volunteer efforts, I encourage you to nominate them. If you feel like you don't want to email psf at python.org, feel free to tell me. I will nominate them on your behalf. So next up, let's take a look at our fiscal sponsorship program. This is somewhat unique. Um, this program allows projects that follow the PSF's mission um, to join our organization and to receive certain benefits. Um, this, these benefits include accounting help and the ability to absorb our nonprofit status so they can receive tax-exempt donations. 
Um, the process for this program requires that the PSF staff audit the projects that are interested in joining. Um, this is mainly a risk assessment because if we do accept a project that is not aligned with our mission, we could lose our nonprofit status. We have to determine that the project fits our mission and that it aligns with the services that we provide. One of the pro once the project is accepted, we create a specific donation page that is just meant for this project, and they can use that to bring in donations for the project. Um, the funding that comes in for our fiscal sponsorship groups is earmarked for their use only. So the expenses that we see um, in our annual impact report uh, are the, is from the money that they have raised themselves for their use. So in a way, they are part of our general budget, but at the same time, they're not, because we don't use it for general PSF expenses. So since our staff internally has been growing, we've been able to offer this service to more and more um, projects. So currently, we offer it to several user groups and conferences in the US, as well as the Pallets Project, which is home to um, projects like Jinja and Flask, and we also house the Pie Ladies Project. So as many of you know, the PSF also maintains infrastructure that our community uses on a daily basis. Um, this includes PyPI, docs.python.org, python.org. Um, so I, I want us to briefly touch on the Moss grant um, that the PSF received a few years back, since it was a significant amount of, of money that we spent in 2018. So the PSF received a grant from Mozilla Open Source Support to finish the PyPI um, code base, which is known as, as Warehouse, and launch it. So this was the first time that the PSF ever received a directed grant for such work. So the process for this grant required that the PSF hire three contractors and execute the grant um, as it was stated. So thanks to those contractors and all of the volunteers that contributed to that project, uh, it went smoothly and lots of improvements were implemented. The PSF work group that works on packaging is actively seeking additional grants so they can continue to improve PyPI and packaging for our community. Recently, the work group opened up a request for information phase for the next set of security improvements that we'll be working on thanks to a Facebook grant that we received. If you are interested in this topic, check out this bit.ly link at the bottom here, the PyPI-Q4 um, link at the bottom of the page for more information. You can also partake in the discussions that are happening. So next up, we have the PSF's grants program. To me, this is the most impactful and meaningful program service that the PSF provides. I work with a great group of people from all around the world, and through this effort um, on the PSF's grants working group, we give out hundreds of thousands of dollars to support uh, a variety of initiatives all around the world. So how does this process work? We have an online form where anyone around the world can submit a grant request. The request could be for Python training, workshops, conferences, development, and, and much more. I included a link here at the top um, for those of you that are interested in learning more about the program or are ever interested in submitting a grant request um, to read more about it. So the grants work group reviews the requests that come in and we use a lot of local input when necessary to gauge the effectiveness of what we're funding um, to, to, to these events. The group devotes a lot of their time to the success of this program. And I have to say, we receive a lot of them, almost on a daily basis. And this group, which is all volunteers outside of me, works all year round. So far this year, we reviewed over 150 grant requests. Part of the grant expenses that the PSF oversees is for the PSF ambassador program. This means that we allot a larger budget to a group or a person um, in a particular part of the world where Python is just being established. For the past two years, the PSF has been funding a group um, in Uganda to do outreach in, in East Africa. They do a lot of outreach at university level, and they also put a lot of effort into introducing people with accessibility needs into our community. So when we add it all up, in 2018, the PSF spent $334,000 on grants. This map shows us how that money was split around the world. We see Python activity happening all over the world. The only place we haven't funded yet 
is Antarctica. But I did recently read that uh, last year someone hosted a software carpentry class in, in Antarctica. So I think it's only a matter of time before we have our first pike on Antarctica in case anyone wants to volunteer. Um, the grant support that we provide is increasing worldwide. In general, the total amount of grant funding increased 48% between 2015 and 2018. I think that is a telling sign that our community is growing and becoming more of a global community. So now that you have an idea of what the PSF does, let's take a look at what's in store for the PSF. We've been busy this year, so that there's a lot that's going to be happening in the very near future. The PSF launched its initiative for Python in education earlier this year. Through various workshops, open spaces, and various communications, it became evident to the PSF that Python in education could use some support. The PSF initiative went through a request for ideas phase where we gathered input from the community as to what they thought we should support. Using that information, we moved on to the request for proposal phase, and through that, we received 20 proposals. Our goal was to select proposals that would have global reach and not just regional. Um, so we, we concentrated on Python education for mobile, localization, as well as resources for educators. After reviewing those proposals, we selected three of them. So the first proposal that we accepted was for Beware. The PSF will be funding the Beware project to work on Python on Android. There are more Android users in the world than any other mobile platform users. We believe that a wider audience will be able to access Python and learn Python once it's easily available on mobile. We will be sharing more updates on this project via our Twitter and our blog, so please do follow us for more updates on that. So additionally, the PSF wanted, um, awarded a grant for, for, to a community member to work on curating resources that are already out there. Um, there are endless amounts of projects and curriculums available online, like this excerpt that we see here from, um, from the Young Coders tutorial that we use at PyCon US. So some resources are great that are out there, and some maybe less so. So this person is going to work through curating and, and, and auditing what's out there and make it easier for those that want to teach Python to find resources to do so. So if we can have the most powerful resources together in one area, it will be easier for people all around the world to teach Python. Lastly is a project called Friendly Tracebacks. This project is not in need of financial support, but they are asking the PSF to help promote their efforts. So Friendly Traceback aims to provide simplified traceback translated into as many languages as possible. So the project maintainer is looking for volunteers to help with tasks such as documenting possible syntax error use cases and documenting exceptions that haven't already been covered. So please check out this bit.ly link here um, for the full call to action from the maintainer if you're interested in joining their effort. So these three projects that we just briefly went over are just the beginning of the PSF's effort to help improve and strengthen Python in education. And we hope to do these kinds of grants on a yearly basis. So over the last few years, the PSF really upped its game in community support. As we see, PyCon has grown, our grants program has grown. We are at the point where we're looking to improve the support for core development as well. I've been working with the steering council to figure out how the PSF can support core development. In August of this year, the PSF approved our proposal that we put together to hire a contractor to help with Python 2 Sunset, which is going to be happening in a few months. So this work will include um, creating a place for our community that folks can use as guidance. Um, it includes doing press releases, auditing links on python.org and docs.python.org, um, updating any mentions of Python 2, communicating with our stakeholders, publicizing resources for our community, as well as helping answer questions from the community. And this is just the starting point for what the PSF plans to help with when it comes to core development and supporting maintenance. Our hope is to come up with additional proposals even this year where the PSF can help fund things such as moving Python from bugs.python.org to GitHub, for example, or upgrading the process that we use for contributor license agreements, because right now it is a nightmare. After we address the workflow improvements for core development, the PSF wants to help 
wants to help make sure that Python stays strong for the years to come. Sustainability for our community and for our language is our top priority. For those of you that haven't seen Russell Keith McGee's keynote from PyCon 2019, I highly recommend it to you all. Here's a link to, to the talk on YouTube. It talks about why we need to address longevity of Python and how we can all help. I'll admit, when I watched this live at PyCon, I was emotionally moved by this talk and I hope that you will all find time to watch it. So I'm gonna talk quickly now because I'm running out of time. <laughs> so it all comes down, all the aspects that I've touched on come down to people, right? It comes down to you. This is Colorado's first Python conference. It is the beginning of something great and the next big step that your community is taking. Great ideas and collaborations will come from this effort. I'm sure they might have already had this morning. A part of Python's future is sitting in this very audience. You are all part of the Python community. We are all stakeholders here. So let's talk. We want the PSF to be impactful, so together we need to discuss what the PSF does. How can we improve it? New services that we can provide to help the community so everyone around the world can have their own Python story. So what does that mean? What's the call to action here? In order for the PSF to be really connected to the local community, we need to hear from you. We need you to be part of our efforts. We need to know what support is needed so everyone that works, so everyone that wants to can have their story. We need to know what the PSF is doing so we can hear feedback from you all, so we can improve upon the work that's needed. Carry forward the positive characteristics of our community. Share your stories, code together, ask questions, talk to one another, help one another, mentor people. Most importantly, be kind to one another. Let's put all of our efforts together to create a sustainable community. Our community together is stronger. So I put together this, this bit.ly link, um, which leads to a python.org page, which lists, I think, about 30 different ways anyone can get involved with the PSF. It's as easy as following our blog or signing up for our newsletter, because just for you to know about the PSF is already a huge step forward for us. So now that you've heard my story and you've heard the PSF story, tell me your story. Don't hesitate to come up to me during the conference and share how you got involved with Python. Share the characteristics of Python that you enjoy. Share the ones that you don't. And of course, if you have any questions or comments about what the PSF does, don't hesitate to come up to me. If you don't have a chance to come up to me during the conference, you can always send me a DM on Twitter or an email. I'm on email all the time, as many of you know. I want to go back home with lots of ideas on how we can grow our community and improve PSF services. And also, I want to let you know that I have limited edition Python stickers. So be sure to come say hi. I will give you some. <laughs> so again, I want to say a big thank you to the organizers for putting on a tremendous first-time conference. Thank you all.